Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me. If you are looking for ways to make your body butters feel more expensive, here are four of my top tips to do just that. These tips can be used for all kinds of body butter formulations. Whipped body butters, body bombs, body butter bars, soft scoopable body butters, and more. If it's a body butter, these tips will make it feel awesome. I've included formulation guidelines in this video and then in the partner blog post I've also included links to formulations where I've used these strategies so you can see them in action to give you an idea of where to get started. Let's dive in. What is a body butter? For the purposes of this video I will be defining body butters as an anhydrous or water-free product that we apply to the skin to moisturize it. They're typically comprised primarily of butters and these can be plant-derived butters like mango butter and shea butter and cocoa butter or pseudo butters made from hydrogenated oils or a blend. Depending on where you live, your body butter formulations may also include small to semi-large amounts of hardening ingredients like waxes and fatty thickeners. Tip number one is to add a starch or a clay to your formulation. Incorporating a silky starch or a soft clay into your body butter can really transform it. Examples of starches you can use include cornstarch, arrowroot starch, and rice starch or rice flour. Really what you're looking for is that it's just very fine and silky. When it comes to clay, white kaolin clay is generally the best clay to choose for this sort of thing as you don't risk creating a body butter that can leave stains on clothing or furniture. If you do want to play with some more colorful clays, you can try blending them with white kaolin clay so you get a bit of the color but less of that staining risk or you can try playing with less pigmented colorful clays like French green clay which is green but pretty softly so. I don't recommend heavier, more sandy clays like Rasool or bentonite clay for this sort of thing, but if you love those clays, try it and see what you think. There are three main reasons you'd include a clay or a starch in a body butter formulation. And reason number one is that in the 10 to 20% usage range, they can really help reduce feelings of greasiness and oiliness on the skin. Once you pass the 20% line, these ingredients can start to impart a powdery finish on the skin, which feels really luxurious. Once we start to get into the 40% range with starches, they add skin mattifying and perfecting properties to our formulations, making them extra well suited to anhydrous facial things. And as a final added benefit, since clays and starches won't melt, large amounts of them can help boost the thermal stability of your body butter formulations. Basically, they can help keep them from melting. I highly recommend experimenting with different percentages of different starches and soft clays to see what sort of wonderfulness they can bring to your body butter formulations. Tip number two is to swap in an ester. If you're looking to give an expensive feel to your body butters that will make them stand out, try swapping out some of the liquid oil in your formulation for a liquid ester. Like liquid oils, esters are oil-soluble emollients. You can make a one-to-one -one swap without really throwing off your formulation, but they feel much lighter and more luxurious. Isopropyl Myristate is a very popular choice, but there are a lot of other wonderful options to choose from. I love C12-15 to alkyl benzoate, cocoa caprolate, and isoamyl laurate for their lightweight skin feel and silicone-like slip. There are lots of natural and not natural options to choose from, and I know you will be delighted by the change that a 15 to 30% swap can make in your formulations. Not only will they improve slip and skin feel, but they'll also lighten the feel of your body butter. Tip number four is to make it positive. One of my all-time favorite ways to add magic to honestly any type of formulation, anhydrous or otherwise, is to add a cationic or positively charged ingredient. Cationic ingredients give our formulations the most silky, indulgent, substantial skin feel. I honestly feel like I can never adequately describe the enchanting beauty that cationic ingredients add to our formulations, but once you've tried it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Cationic ingredients are amazing, and I highly, highly recommend getting one or two if you don't already have some in your pantry. Since we're talking about anhydrous formulations today, you'll need to look at oil-soluble cationic ingredients like BTMS-25, BTMS-50, and Behentramonium chloride. There are some natural options like Very Soft EQ-65, but I haven't been impressed with any of the ones that I've tried. They lack the fundamental, magical wonderfulness of the synthetic options. Formulating to include 2-3% to of the 
active conditioning ingredient is typically enough, though do let the smell of the ingredient influence your formulating decisions because some of them smell pretty fishy and it can come through in the finished product. And tip number four, our final tip for today, is to experiment with different cooling methods. Sometimes making something seem expensive is as simple as doing something a different way than other makers are doing it. If you've ever looked at a body butter product, looked at the product, looked at the ingredient list and thought there's no way there's enough hardener in this formulation with where that is on the ingredient list for this formulation to be as solid as it is, that is almost certainly a specific cooling method at work. Two great examples of expensive products with ingredient lists that seem to defy hardening logic are Mae Lindstrom's Blue Cocoon and Kate McLeod's Body and Face Stones. I remember taking a stab at making my own Blue Lagoon before I learned about bringing bombs and body butters to trace and I ended up with a kind of fragrant slop rather than a firm bomb. I spent years thinking that that ingredient list must have just been in the wrong order before I learned about bringing bombs to trace in my Formula Botanica coursework. Then I tried again and voila! success. So yeah, the specific method used to cool the bomb can have just as big of an effect on the final product as the ingredients that it's made from. Cooling changes that can make a big difference in the final product are cold processing a formulation versus hot processing it, freezing versus refrigerating versus room temperature setting, and the precise level of trace that you bring a product to. Experiment with them all. It is amazing what the cooling method can change. If you'd like to learn about why your whipped body butter isn't whipping, click here. And if you'd like to learn about six body butter mistakes that most newbies make and how to fix them, click here. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.